The BYU football program is officially a preseason top 25 team according to the AP Top 25. Where are their opponents ranked? We'll get into that. We'll also hear from BYU linebacker Ben Bywire. Had a great chance to catch up with him last week during BYU Photo Day. You'll hear that conversation on today's show. And Maury Bamba has officially reported to BYU training camp. We'll talk about all of that ahead on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. I work for the KSL Sports Zone in Salt Lake City, Utah, as the executive producer of DJ and PK in the morning. And a huge thank you once again for making us your first listen right here on Locked On Cougars. We are very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network. The motto at the network is your team every day. And as such, we are your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. Uh, thank you so much for checking us out, by the way. It's so much fun to be with you guys. By the way, I threw this out on yesterday's show. Let's see if I can pull it up here. Oh, maybe I don't have it actually around me. Apologies. Uh, so we actually have a Royal Blue Navy, uh, not Royal Blue Navy, Royal Blue Pullover. We're giving away as part of our 1,000 subscriber giveaway. We have over 1,300 subscribers, but I kind of dropped the ball on that. But we're doing the giveaway this week. Have had a massive massive response so far. I'm going to keep entries going probably till the end of this week and we'll announce the winner next Monday. So if you'd like to be entered to win a Royal Blue uh, pullover, please email us locked on BYU at gmail.com. You just say, Hey, I'd like to be entered to win. And there you go. Simple as that. You'll be in the running and I'll make that announcement on next Monday. So we'll keep the entries open until the end of this week. We've had an absolutely incredible response so far. So big thank you for all of you checking that out. All right. Uh, so let's talk a little BYU football. The AP top 25 preseason poll was announced yesterday. It came out and BYU, there was some question of, okay, will the Cougars be inside that top 25? They did not make the coach poll, they were, what, 29 in the coaches poll if you went by the votes and extended it out. But BYU checks in at number 25 as the final team inside the top 25 in this preseason poll. And all things considered, I'm actually okay with where BYU is at. There's some people out there saying the BYU should be a more highly rated team. They should be top 15 because they won 10 games a year ago. Here's the thing. The good news is BYU is inside the top 25, my friends. That is the positive takeaway from this. It's a great launching pad for BYU to start their season. Last year, they finished the season with 19, excuse me, in 19th place on that AP poll after the loss to UAB in the bowl game. So there is a lot of ground for BYU to make up here, but at the same time, you're starting out in a great position. Uh, speaking of the Cougars. Now, in terms of opponents BYU will face this season, the highest rated opponent in the preseason poll is number five, Notre Dame. That'll be the matchup October 8th down there in Las Vegas at Allegiant Stadium. Very much looking forward to that matchup. Cougars will also take on Baylor in their home opener uh, in just over three weeks' time. Uh, they will take on the Bears, who are ranked 10th in this uh, this season. The following week, they will face against number 11, Oregon, up there in Eugene. So a big opportunity. You've got three top 15 teams on this schedule. And then, oh, by the way, the week after you face Notre Dame, well, there's Arkansas waiting for you coming to Provo. Arkansas, number 19 in this poll. Now, other teams BYU will face this season that are in uh, the poll in terms of receiving votes. They're outside the top 25. Those include uh, Boise State. They got, to believe, just five votes. Utah State, who BYU will face at home, also got two votes. So, there are a number of opponents for BYU schedule this year that are pretty pretty highly thought of, but the four that are the top 20 ranks, so Arkansas at 19, Oregon at 11, uh, Baylor at 10, and Notre Dame at 5, those are the games that truly will make or break BYU's chances of being the quote-unquote uh, darling that many of you out there, and I wouldn't mind it as either. It makes for good business when it comes to what I do on a daily basis, both in radio and with this podcast, to make a run. 
I really think that there's an opportunity for the Cougars out there. And Tom Fornelli thinks so from CBS Sports. We had him on with DJ and PK. This is coming to mind. Literally, as I do this, I, if I had had some foresight on it, I probably would have pulled the audio uh, from my radio show. But Tom Fornelli listed BYU as one of the major disruptors in his mind that could potentially affect the college football playoff race. And he talked with DJ and PK. This is going back to last Friday. So if you want to go to kslsports.com, go to the podcast page, and you can listen to this interview. I'll probably link it in the show notes as well. But he says that BYU, just because of the fact that BYU has so much production returning, they're the second highest production returning in terms of 85% of their production returning from last year's squad. He thinks that BYU, knowing what they're doing and being able to get off to a pretty quick start, is actually going to be an advantageous position for BYU, especially when they welcome Baylor to Provo and Oregon up there in Oregon with Dan Lanning take over. It's a new regime. Same thing with Notre Dame, he said. It's a little bit later on in the season for Notre Dame, but... He thinks that of those three games, he had those three listed as the games BYU really could affect the college football playoff with. He thinks they could win two of the three. That was a bit surprising to me because Tom Fornelli is not a guy. He doesn't live here in Utah. He lives in, I think, the upper Midwest. Chicago, I think, is where he is based, working for CBS Sports. I was surprised. He thought they could take two, possibly all three of those games. And let's be real. If BYU takes all three of those games and they also beat Arkansas, what are we looking at? A 12 and 0 season? That 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 really at that point, if you've beaten all those other teams, you beat those four teams, who on that schedule outside of those four is going to beat you? I that it seems like a bit of a pipe dream in my mind that BYU could be staring down a season that could be one for the ages. But there is an opportunity there for the Cougars, especially with the way the schedule lays out. Because like I said, early on in the season, you got a retooling Baylor coming to Provo. You have to get past USF. Let's not uh, discount that, by the way. And Gary Bohannon, who was the starter for Baylor a year ago when they beat up on BYU in Waco, well, he was announced yesterday as the new starting quarterback for the USF Bulls. So for the second time in just over a year, yeah, just over a year's time, he will uh, get a crack at BYU. He was pretty efficient in that game against BYU while I was playing for Baylor. Well, Timmy McLean, the guy that BYU seemingly couldn't tackle in their game in Provo last year against USF, we well, entered the transfer portal. So the deck chairs are switching left and right with regards to these college football quarterback decisions, but the advantageous position BYU's got, they know who their quarterback one is. They know essentially what their first team offense is going to be. You have to see if Chris Brooks truly is the answer at running back. And I've got nothing that leads me to believe that he's not. I think this BYU defense, they're hungry and they're eager to prove that they are not as bad as they were down the stretch last season. And if they improve even by a marginal uh, mark, I think this could be a defense that could get enough stops for BYU to win the vast majority of their games. Obviously, you've got some very highly thought of opponents. You have four top 20 teams uh, you're facing off against this season. So it's a tall task for the Cougars, but I think that this is a very, very manageable schedule for BYU, especially with how things lay out. You've got some critical back-to-backs. you got the home Baylor, away Oregon. you got the neutral site Notre Dame, home Arkansas. Those are the four teams that are top 20. If you manage those two weekends, the four, I guess it's four weekends technically, but the two back-to-back weekends I'm talking about in September and then in October, who's to say that you're not putting together the season that BYU has wanted to have? And they've had some pretty darn good seasons the past two years. But if you go 11-1, and 12-0 against this type of a schedule, who's going to say that you're not college football playoff worthy? I, I, I Trust me, I, I feel just absolutely ridiculous even discussing this, but the possibility exists out there. So, I like where BYU's positioned. They're a top 25 team. You can't ask for more than that. I know they're number 25, but they are inside the top 25 as they should be. I thought the college, I thought the coaches poll, it's the more disingenuous of the two in my mind. I believe that the media out there has more of a sense for what's going on. BYU checked in as high as number 13 in two different pollsters ballots. So there's a wide range of opinions on BYU, but the good news is, They are inside the top 25, and the possibility exists out there, if you can run the table here, that you could have that season that could get you in the conversation for the college football playoff. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we'll catch up with Ben Bywater. Coming off a 100-tackle season a year ago, a guy who was really a breakout star for the Cougars last year, and I think is poised to do even bigger things this season. We'll have a one-on-one conversation with him coming up here in just a moment. First, though, a word on our friends over at Bet Online. They are the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs, my friends. Find all of your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games right now. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, 
NFL, college football, NBA, college basketball, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. It's all there. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports wagering information from live in game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have got you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today on their website. It's all courtesy of your friends at betonline.net where the game starts. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys taking the time to check out the show. It is so much fun to be talking all things BYU. So thank you for downloading the show. As you can see down below here, that's my Twitter handle, at Jacob C. Hatch. You can follow the show also on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Just search out Locked On Cougars, and you guys can essentially follow the show. It's where the show doesn't really stop. We do this podcast, it's 20 to 30 minutes, and then we're kind of done for the day, but we are always active on social media, so all of your interaction is absolutely critical to our success. And by the way, I'll get this out of the way early. Uh, Thursday, I'm hoping to do a mailbag edition of the podcast, open up uh, the mailbag and answer your questions. If you've got those, send them in via social media or email us. You can email your questions in as well. Once again, lockedonbyu at gmail.com is the email address there. All right, time to talk uh, with BYU linebacker Ben Bywater, a guy who I thought had a monster season a year ago by necessity in many ways because he was one of the few linebackers in BYU's main rotation that did not suffer either a significant injury or a season-ending injury injury that knocked him out for the majority of the season. As a result, he had a hundred tackle season, really just a breakout campaign a year ago for Ben. Uh, He's also one of the guys who I believe is becoming one of the quote unquote spokesmen for the BYU football program. He's just, he's a great interview. He is a jovial. He is engaging. He knows what he's doing when he's talking with the media and he always gives you good intel. So I had a chance to catch up with him last week during BYU football's photo day. Uh, My camera work still learning folks. So don't, uh, mind the off-center picture, but without further ado, here you go, Ben Bywater. It's kind of getting kind of the grind of fall camp here. What is the mindset? Uh, as a you're a linebacker, so you're banging with guys every play. But what's the mindset as you approach the midway point? Yeah, mindset is. I mean, we're doing all this to win games, right? So like for us, it's just you got to think long term, and so you want to stay healthy. And like in order to win games, you got to stay healthy. So. It's like, okay, how are we going to win games? How are we going to get better every day? But mainly staying healthy and, you know, going undefeated. So that's the goal. That, and that's the interesting part about this. I think every team, every year, you always have your team goals, obviously, yeah. you set out. But one of them is to win every game. And how – I'm trying to think of the way to phrase this question correctly. How do you best go about compartmentalizing that and making it a reality? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And, it, I mean, it's so easy to get ahead of yourself. You know, you got such a big schedule. Like, everyone always talks about that. But, I mean, if you just take it day to day, I mean, and then you just listen to your coaches in the meetings, I mean, it's pretty easy to just dice it up in a different section. So for us, it's like, hey, special teams, how can you get better? Defense, you know, what coverage are we running? How can we get better? And so we can do all those things, stack days on top of each other. It's like, you know, by game one, you'll be locked and loaded. You had a 100 tackle season a year ago, and it was due in part to injuries with guys that were on the depth chart in front of you. What will the returns of guys like Keenan, Peyton, et cetera, do in your opinion for this defense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so I mean, I, I started from, you know, game one to game 13 last year, but I mean, those guys going obviously put more weight on my shoulders, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm excited to have those guys back. I mean, especially in, in a room that's like, we have such a big schedule, you know, you want to stay healthy. So being able to take the load off of each one of us and everyone's kind of sharing the load and and making plays like it'll be it'll be special i'm excited a lot of people kind of point to last season when keenan got injured the, the, you see, look at the metrics and it seemed like that it really hurt that defense what sets him apart as a linebacker yeah keenan i mean he's he's smart he's been here a long time he's takes care of his body he's very strategic in what he does i mean he's a leader on and off the field and so he's a guy that i enjoy playing with and i know the younger guys look up to big time and he's just the guy on our team that everyone can look to and be like, hey, this, this guy takes care of his business. Like, I want to be like him. So that's what makes Keenan special is he's physical. He's very twitchy. He gets the job done. And, I mean, he just doesn't make a lot of mistakes. So it's, it's hard to beat a guy like that, you know. Absolutely. What was the main thing or things you worked on this offseason to improve upon your game? Yeah. For me, it was mainly get my body right, and then it was obviously get smarter in, in the film room. So I watched a lot of film and then getting off blocks, just like all the fundamentals. I mean, you can never get too good at those. Getting off blocks as hard as a backer, tackling. I mean, but for me it was, okay, am I, am I dialed? Physically am I dialed? And then how, how am I doing in the, in the film room? So I feel like I got smarter. I feel like I got bigger, faster, stronger, and, and I'm content. I had a great offseason. 
That's awesome. Well, Ben, thank you so much for some time. Hey, Jake, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. There you go, BYU linebacker Ben Bywater. And it's interesting to hear him talk about the fact that he worked on just making sure that he's physically right, but also working in the film room. He's a guy that I have always thought uh, was a guy who understood the game at a deeper level than most linebackers. And what I mean by that is he's a guy who doesn't necessarily play by complete instincts. It seems like he was more of a film junkie and played to what he understood, kind of understanding the schemes uh, for BYU's defense. Maybe I should ask him, should I ask him that question? Like, which way do you kind of lean? Because there are guys, truly, that play by instinct more than they do in terms of overall preparation. And there's, let me be very clear about this. There is no right way to go about getting the job done. There are linebackers who are famous for not having really uh, been super, I guess, uh, hardcore film watching types, but they were very, very good. And we're talking NFL Hall of Famer types, but there's other guys who are meticulous. They watch hours and hours of film trying to find any single advantage they possibly can. And that makes them the type of player that they are. So, I've always appreciated Ben and his candor and also just talking about the fact that he wants to be the best linebacker he possibly can be. He, he acknowledged the fact that, yes, he started all 13 games a year ago and he was the beneficiary with that 100 tackle season of having some other guys get injured. It, it, it's just it's it's no secret. That, that's the biggest thing. It's no secret for a guy like Ben Bywater. But I think that he is poised to have a breakout season. And by the way. Him wearing the number two, I'm getting some very strong Spencer Hadley vibes. And I know that Spencer Hadley, uh, many of you maybe who are uh, more recent BYU fans don't necessarily remember Spencer Hadley. Think about uh, the guys that have just been absolute machines, not necessarily the most talented linebackers, but are guys who are just effective grinders on BYU's defense. Spencer Hadley wore the number two. Ben Bywater switched to wearing the number two this year. He wore the number 33 a year ago. And I, I, I can't I, I can't lie. I really like that number. And like I said, I'm getting some strong Spencer Hadley vibes from him. Ben's, I think, a better athlete than Spencer Hadley. I, that's just my personal opinion on the matter. But I think there could be some fun things coming for a guy like Ben Bywater down the pipe here. And the good news is he's going to have the benefit. He's going to be the beneficiary of having guys like Keenan Peely and Peyton Wilgar coming back healthy. Uh, the status of Chaz Ayu remains up in the air. I've seen the rumors out there of him potentially missing the entire season and redshirting this year, coming back at some point midseason. Folks, I, I don't have a hard and fast answer of what to expect for him. At this point, if you see uh, Chaz get onto the football field this fall, I think that's a positive. He has dealt with a number, and I mean a number, of injuries during his time as a BYU Cougar. The hope is that he can enjoy just one, I, I mean just one, season where he is fully healthy. And maybe that is in 2023 when BYU goes into the Big 12. I know it's crazy to think about that he could still be suiting up for BYU then, but the possibility exists out there. So, uh, the good news is I think the linebacking core is very, very solid. Uh, I talked yesterday about some of the outcomes from BYU and their first scrimmage of fall camp. Uh, one thing I felt to note yesterday on the linebacker front is that the, the backup linebackers, I mentioned a guy like Tavita Gagne, who I mentioned on yesterday's show, is a guy who's really starting to emerge and show out. Well, I got to tell you one other thing. The Wilson brothers, uh, both Josh and then Micah, who is a true freshman coming into the program, both of them had actually very, very solid days based on what I had heard from multiple people uh, from that scrimmage. So I think this linebacking core, it, it fell off a year ago. The, the production, the talent level, just the overall ability to step in and be the backbone the BYU's defense needed them to be once they lost guys like, uh, especially Keenan Peely, Peyton Wilgar later in the year, losing those guys, I thought there was a big fall off for BYU's linebackers outside of Ben Bywater, I think this year they're better poised to absorb any potential losses, but the hope is that they don't have to absorb the lot, absorb those losses this year. And guys like Keenan Peely and Wilgar can go out, have big seasons and potentially make the jump to the NFL, which is, I think in their minds, probably what they're planning on doing. So, there's big opportunities right there. And Ben By Ben Bywater, he's still got another year probably in BYU system to really emerge and continue to develop his game. I'm of the opinion that Ben continues to kind of go on the track he's going on. He's an NFL guy in the making as well. So linebacker you, yeah, BYU's kind of turned into that in the last decade or so. It's crazy to think about, but think about all the different guys that have come through, starting with guys like Kyle Van Noy, Spencer Hadley had his moments, uh, Fred Warner now with the San Francisco 49ers. There have been some really, really good linebackers coming through BYU, and it sure looks like the pipeline and does not run dry yet. So that's a positive.
if you're a Cougar fan. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we need to talk about a new addition to the BYU football roster. That is the JUCO transfer, Maury Bamba. He announced on social media that he is finally on campus at BYU and getting ready to join BYU football when it comes to training camp. We'll talk about what he can bring to the BYU defensive secondary. We also need to talk about another All-American citation for BYU tackle, Blake Freeland. And we found out the preseason ranking for the BYU women's volleyball program as well. We'll get to all of that as we continue on right here on Locked on Cougars. All right, folks, before we go here on this Tuesday edition of the show, uh, as some of you may have seen on social media last night, uh, my wife was, uh, she likes to check out the podcast every so often. I, I wish she would listen to it daily because, you know, give me extra downloads. But uh, she turned on the podcast and my kids immediately heard it and like, hey, that's dad's voice. So they ran over and we're looking at the phone and I did my regular intro. I said, my name's Jay Catch, blah, 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 blah. And my son, I, I tweeted this out on social media. It's on my Twitter feed, but my son <laughs> still makes me chuckle. He's like, Dad, your name's not Jake. Your name's Daddy. So uh, apparently I need to be introducing myself as Daddy Hatch. I I, I don't know. It, just, it made me chuckle uh, the way he said it because he was just like, who is this Jake guy you're referring to? One of those fun things. Being a dad, by the way, is just it is one of the coolest things in my entire world. And trust me, I, I was a guy growing up. And I'm like, oh, I'll get to being a dad one day. Well, guess what? Being a dad, it truly is just awesome. There's a lot of struggles being a parent, as many of you probably out there can relate to uh, listening to this podcast. Many of you out there are parents or grandparents, but the good news is they are just beyond rewarding. But apparently my name is not Jake, folks. My name is Daddy, according at least to my son, Colt. So just kind of one of those fun little tidbits about this podcast. All right, before we go, let's actually get to the BYU news we still need to hit on. Uh, that is that uh, BYU finally has one of their junior college transfers in camp. Uh, Maury Bamba announced, let's get to work on social media that came up late, late Sunday night. Uh, I would assume that he is probably going through the acclimatization period at BYU, meaning he'll work in his helmet for the first two days, add shoulder pads on day three and four. And then the fifth day, he can start to begin in full drills, uh, tackling, all that stuff. The one thing about Maury Bamba is he brings physical tools that you simply cannot teach to the cornerback position. Six foot three is, is what he's listed at. He uh, reportedly ran a 4.34 40-yard dash at Tyler Junior College's camp earlier on uh, this uh, spring. And the crazy thing about this is this guy has already been to two different junior college programs. Uh, he wasn't highly recruited out of high at a high school up there in uh, Wisconsin, ended up going to ASA, uh, ASA college in Miami, then getting to Tyler junior college in Texas. Uh, he went to a D three school on a track scholarship. There's just all kinds of things in his background. But the thing about this is I'm not hundred percent convinced that Maury Bamba comes in and makes an impact the way that Gabe Judy Lally has. Cause Gabe, Gabe Judy Lally has started for two years in the SEC. I know it was at Vanderbilt. Uh, we can get all that jokes out of the way, but he is a two year starter in the SEC. That, that's not for nothing. Maury Bamba has not played a lot of football during his college career so far, but the good news is I think the physical tools are there for Maury Bamba to be a big part of BYU as they go into the big 12. He probably will spend, I would guess most of the season kind of getting his, uh, feet wet, trying to figure out the schemes for BYU. Coach Guilford, uh, speaking of General Guilford, BYU's cornerbacks coach, will make sure that he is schooled up on exactly what he expects from him. But if he gets any playing time, or maybe he comes in and just absolutely shocks the world and is just an absolute natural and becomes that number four cornerback for BYU in that rotation, that would be just like incredible. It'd be like, wow, what did we just stumble upon here? It'd be just, a, you found, you struck gold essentially if that if that were to play out even if he doesn't uh, end up playing much this year but he becomes a rotation piece going into 2023 and you enter the big 12 and like i said he's got size that you simply cannot teach six foot three is just like a god's gift to cornerbacks right now we we've seen it in the nfl they want tall rangy athletes who can run well maury bomb is six foot 190 pounds and reportedly runs a mid four threes 40 is there anything better in terms of a cornerback that BYU could have found. And the crazy thing about this is Tanner Jacobson, the former BYU safety, who's now the head coach at Tyler Junior College, got to Tyler as he took over as the new head coach, saw Maury and said, uh, hey, BYU, uh, you may want to take a look at this guy over here. So good to have Maury Bomba in camp. And of course, we'll be out at BYU training camp today. There's media observation uh, at noon. For those of you uh, making it in your plans, uh, 1230 will be a BYU availability. So uh, we will hopefully have some more details on exactly what Maury is doing when he is in training camp. If he's already in training camp, we'll have more on that as uh, today progresses. All right, a couple other notes for you guys before we go. Here's congratulations to BYU offensive tackle. 
Blake Freeland, he was named to the Athletics 2022 preseason All-American first team. The team is made up of 25 players from 17 schools, including 11 on offense, 11 on defense, as well as three specialists. Freeland is a six foot eight, 300 pound a junior and started all 13 games a year ago for BYU in 2021 at left tackle and was just absolutely a sensation. He's getting all kinds of love when it comes to next year's NFL draft. This is a really, really cool honor for him because the Athletic, they think that he is that highly thought of. He is that talented of a player. And this could be the final season for Blake Freeland in a BYU uniform. And if it is the final season and he goes out and has the season that he and the rest of the offense and vision they could have, well, guess what? He's going to make himself plenty of money. He'll have memories that he'll never forget from his time at BYU. And could he end up as a first-round draft pick next year? It very much is in the cards here, and it could play out that way. So congratulations, congratulations once again to Blake Freeland on that award. Really, really cool stuff there. And the final note before we go on today show is congratulations to the BYU Women's Volleyball Program. They came in at number 10 in the American Volleyball Coaches Association preseason poll. BYU had a 30-2 and record a year ago. Many of you will recall that. A perfect 18-0 West Coast Conference run in route to their second straight West Coast Conference title. Their sixth in seven seasons under head coach Heather Olmsted. Uh, they made a sweet 16 run uh, for BYU. They return All-American setter Whitney Bauer as well as middle blocker Heather Knighting, outside hitter, hitter Aaron Livingston, and opposite hitter Kate Grimmer. Uh, BYU has been inside the top 20 the entire time that Coach Olmstead has been at the helm of the BYU women's program. Being inside, being a top 10 team means they're expected to have another great season. And if you have not watched the women's volleyball program in action, you're missing out on one of the true elite units for BYU when it comes to all the programs across the campus. It's crazy to think about how good the rest of the athletic department at BYU has been. The football program, we get it. It takes kind of the lion's share of the, the recognition and the kind of the limelight. The men's basketball program takes a lot more of that. But these other programs out there, if you have an interest in getting to some, getting into some other sports and supporting other BYU programs, the women's volleyball program is a great place to start. Elite athletes, high-level play, and the best part is they win a lot. Like I said, 30-2 and two a year ago, folks. They were just absolutely lights out. So congratulations to Coach, Coach, Coach Olmstead and her squad starting out at number 10 in the preseason rankings. All right, that is going to do it for today's edition of the podcast. A huge thank you once again for joining us and making us your first listen of the day. Now go make your second listen. Our friends over the Locked On Big 12 podcast. Get caught up on all the Big 12 news that you can handle with Josh Neighbors. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts, just like this one. And until tomorrow, this is Daddy Hatch signing off. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.